look at the camera. <laughs> It is Genia and Captain Peter Hammerstedt from Sea Shepherd. Hello, thanks for joining us. My pleasure. So today I'm hosting Captain Peter here and he's going to be answering some of your guys' questions that you send me on Snapchat. So if you guys are ready, let's get this video started. Do that. Do this? Yeah. <laughs> it's the Genia Man. Genia Man. Tell us a bit about yourself and what you do at Sea Shepherd. My name is Peter Hammerstedt. I am the captain of the Sea Shepherd vessel Bob Barker. I sit on the board of directors for Sea Shepherd Global. I'm in charge of our anti-poaching campaigns all around Africa. And I've been with Sea Shepherd for over 14 years, protecting marine wildlife on all seven seas. Uh, sea Shepherd is a marine conservation organization. What we do is we go out to sea to directly intervene in the slaughter of marine wildlife. We measure our success by the number of lives that we save and by the number of criminal operations that we shut down. And the way that we see it is that there are a lot of laws out there protecting the oceans and yet what is missing is for somebody to enforce those laws. For example, since 1986 there's been a ban on commercial whaling. It's been illegal to kill whales for for over three decades and yet still in that time Norway, Iceland and Japan have killed over 40,000 whales. So it's in situations like that that Sea Shepherd supported by people all over the world including here in Israel uh, get involved to make a difference. So why did you choose to like help marine animals in particular? I've been a vegan for 15 years and I think that marine wildlife and certainly fish get the least amount of attention of any animal in in the animal kingdom and yet still it's twice as many fish are slaughtered every single year than all other animals combined. And arguably the, the practice of killing these animals is crueler than the practice of killing any other animal on land. No other animal is drowned to death or frozen to death or crushed to death under the weight of all of the other animals that are killed along with it. And uh, that's why I feel like they need a voice. And certainly fish are literally voiceless. Fish unlike us don't have, they don't have vocal cords, their screams are silent and therefore they need a voice and as somebody who values life and somebody who measures success by the number of lives that we save then arresting illegal fishing vessels taking those boats out of action where they can't harm marine wildlife anymore is a very very effective way to make a difference so what is the process to get accepted to Sea Shepherd and can anyone do it What's incredible about Sea Shepherd is that it is largely run by volunteers. So more than 80-85% of the crew on our ships are volunteers. Many of them are Israeli volunteers. In fact, I know from traveling all over the world that Israelis generally do their military service and then they go traveling for a year and certainly joining a Sea Shepherd campaign, seeing the world and also protecting marine wildlife is a, is a great thing to do. Um, a lot of the funding that we get comes from our onshore volunteers who are doing tabling events at different functions, at different concerts to raise the money that we need to get our ships to sea. Uh, running our vessels is incredibly expensive and we're completely reliant on donations from the public to directly translate and convert that generosity into whales, dolphins, seals and fish that swim free because of our interventions. So go please and donate to Sea Shepherd. I'm going to leave a link down below so you can check it out. So what, like, if people really want to, like, be on a boat? If people want to join a Sea Shepherd ship, then they can go onto our website, seashepherdglobal.org. That's seashepherdglobal.org. There's an application to download, put all of your skills on there and what your availability is like. And then as positions open up on board our vessels, then we will contact you. We have ships operating off the coast of Africa at the moment, addressing the issue of illegal, unreported and unregulated fishing. We have a vessel in Mexico that's working to protect the endangered vaquita porpoise, of which there are only 60 of these animals left. We're working in the Mediterranean pulling up illegal ghost nets, fishing nets that have been abandoned in the Mediterranean Sea that continue to kill wildlife until they're removed from the ocean. And right now at this very min minute two of our ships are chasing Japanese whaling vessels down in the Southern Ocean Whale Sanctuary. If you want to join us, if you want to be a part of a solution, then go onto our website seashepherdglobal.org. What can like regular people do to like help marine animals in general, like besides donating to Sea Shepherd and besides like stopping eating animals, which is obviously what you should be doing first. So 
what can we do else to help? To be an activist, I think you have to find what your passion is for it to be sustainable, and then you have to keep fighting until you, to, until you reach what your end goal is. So I encourage everybody to look at their own lives, see what they're passionate about, see what skills they have to contribute to that, and hopefully that aligns with what Sea Shepherd does. And, and if it does, then you're welcome to crew with us. Awesome. What measures are Sea Shepherd taking to help marine animals currently in captivity? Well, I've always been opposed to animals in any type of captivity situation. I think it, animals in captivity give people the wrong idea of animals. It makes it feel like it's acceptable to imprison animals against their will. Consent is, of course, very important in any type of relation, human or, or, or otherwise. Uh, right now, Sea Shepherd has a campaign in Taji, Japan, where lots and lots of dolphins are being slaughtered every single year for their meat as documented in the documentary movie The Cove. But what many people don't realize is that a driving force behind the dolphin slaughter in Taji is the animal captivity industry. The certain dolphins are selected to be sent to China, to be sent to Mongolia, to be sent to Russia, to participate in, in the aquarium trade. And because these dolphins sell for something like $20,000 each, a lot more than the value of these animals by meat, then it becomes a reason for it continuing. So I think people have to look at the links. I think for myself, when I want to enjoy wildlife and experience wildlife, then I do so on the, at the terms of that wildlife, by either interacting with them out in nature or by watching great animal documentaries and, and nature documentaries like uh, what St uh, Sir David Attenborough does. Planet Earth. Planet Earth. <clears throat> so what has been the biggest achievement for Sea Shepherd? I think what Sea Shepherd's really well known for are our campaigns down in the Southern Ocean to protect whales, where in 10 years of directly intervening in the slaughter of whales in a designated whale sanctuary, Sea Shepherd has saved the lives of over 6,000 whales. That's 6,000 whales that are swimming free right now at this very moment because kind, caring, compassionate people got ships out to sea where they needed to be to get between the harpoons and, and these whales. For me, every single life that we're able to save is, is a victory. And I think that's something that's really important to remember as animal activists. We get obsessed with numbers and we talk about the billions of animals that are slaughtered every year for the animal industries. And it's important to remember that it's billions times one. Each one of these animals killed is an individual personality, an individual with the same ability to feel pain as you or I, with an ability to feel joy and feel fear. And at my darkest days, when I look at the problems that we're facing as being almost insurmountable, I remember that maybe we can't save the entire world, but we can absolutely 100% save the entire world for one individual. <laughs> so good. So I got a question here. What marine animals are currently most at risk? One of the biggest challenges we face with marine conservation is the issue of overfishing. And a big part of that is illegal, unreported, and unregulated fishing, so-called IUU fishing. It's the reason why more than 90% of sharks have declined in the North Atlantic in the past just something like 30 years. It's the reason why the bluefin tuna here in the Mediterranean, just off the coast of Israel, populations of bluefin tuna are down to 3% of what they were 30, 40 years ago. And what I think is really illustrates the extent of these problems is that people feel a great connection to sea turtles. There's seven species of sea turtles found around the world. And yet six of these seven species are endangered and could go extinct within the next 10, 15 years. And yet there isn't a single fishery that deliberately targets sea turtles. They're being accidentally killed within other fishing methods. And that illustrates the greater extent of the problem. Are you trying to protect also um, species that are being like legally hunted? Mm -hmm. Sea Shepherd's a law enforcement organization. So we specifically go after criminal activity, especially criminal activity that involves the illegal fishing aspect. So, and it's estimated that 15 to 40 percent of all the fish caught in the world are caught by these criminal operators. So for me it's a very easy issue to get involved with. There's governments around the world that lack the economic resources to adequately patrol, to monitor, control, and surveil their waters. And that's where Sea Shepherd can come in. We can volunteer a ship and a crew and the fuel to increase maritime security and to bring these criminals to justice, take them off off the sea where they're doing great harm. 
But of course we bring cameras with us out to sea. There's 30 crew on board my vessel and yet when we bring cameras with us, millions and millions of people are able to go out to sea with us to see what's happening to those animals. And I hope that looking at that footage and seeing the true extent of this slaughter gets people to question their own lifestyle choices and think about their relationship with the sea. What do you eat on board? <laughs> sea Shepherd's unique as a conservation group because we're one of the only conservation groups in the world that advocates for a vegan diet. All of our ships have vegan food served on board. When we go out to sea, we sometimes go out for three, four months at a time. So fresh food goes out quite quickly and early, but we have great cooks are incredibly creative and that's why we have food and cuisine from all over the world. Uh, hummus is a staple on board the vessel, of course. Uh, you could say that our crew are powered by it, but uh, we've got Indian food, Thai food, Singaporean food, Chinese food, Mexican, Italian, every type of cuisine is presented on board and uh, our crew leave the ships healthier than when they came on board. So, for example, what do you eat like in a day? What do you eat uh, in a day? In a day on a Sea Shepherd ship, we would start off hopefully with a smoothie. Uh, all, there's always toast and a number of different kinds of sandwich spreads presented. If we're lucky, there's a tofu scramble or some other kind of fry up. Baked beans if we're lucky as well. Uh, lunch is usually some kind of uh, sandwich with different types of toppings. Oftentimes we'll have burgers and, and hot dogs and other types of fake meat. Um, we usually have curries and stews. Sometimes we have big pasta salads like pesto salads and other types of salads that are, that are really good. Uh, for dinner, if we're very lucky, it's pizza night. That's something that the crew always look forward to. And of course, our galley team, and we have two to three cooks working on board our ships, do an incredible job presenting pizza for 40 people. It gets especially difficult, of course, to cook when we're in bad weather. At times, we can be in seas of eight to, to nine meters. And so imagine cooking soup or stew in an elevator that's falling down six stories and rising six stories every 10, 15 minutes. So without a doubt, being a cook on board a Sea Shepherd ship is the hardest job. And being any type of crew member on a Sea Shepherd ship, eating is the easiest job. Ahem, ahem, it's the last question. Are you ready? It's another food question. No, it's not. Okay. Are you single? I, I'm married to the sea. I spend most of my time on a ship. That makes me a difficult person to be in a relationship with. So I'm in a complicated relationship with the ocean. Sorry, girls. All right, I think this is it. Okay. Thank you so much for being here. My pleasure. Visiting thank our country and everything. I'm always happy to be here and, and thank you so much for having me on your channel. No worries. Don't forget to check out the link down below and donate to Sea Shepherd whatever you can. Also subscribe to my channel, follow me on Snapchat and on Instagram and I will see you in the next video. Love you guys. Do you like this? Are we doing the finger thing again? Yeah. No, we're doing, we're doing, we're doing, we're doing, we're doing, bye. Bye.